Power to the Truth. This is Margo. This is Monday, February 11th, 2019, 4.16 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. So today we've got another new day's worth of methane data. So we're going to go over that. We're going to go over comets and then earthquakes. And um, so we showed uh, Thursday on yesterday. Thursday, February 7th was the new data and now they have CAMS, Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services, which is the website we're looking at, has Friday, February 8th data up. So I've chosen that as the base time. The area I've chosen is Arctic so we can get as close up of you as possible with what's happening in the sea ice or in that area and I've chosen surface level. So I already have this movie loaded up. So this is where we left off with Thursday with this big release coming out in the Carrot Sea in all these different shades of red and orange and yellow and to the east of Novaya Zemlya and this release that had happened um, off of Norway, coming off of Norway and Finland and Sweden and moving around in this Barents Sea and moving over to Svalbard. So that's where it ended. So continuing with the methane melodrama, soap opera, whatever you want to call it, every day we have new data, I will be showing it. So it's a little bit jumpy this first time through and then it will smooth out but we're seeing into the forecast period that <clears throat> it's going they're forecasting this red release to come all the way across this Laptev Sea. Okay, now it's in the forecast period. There's Sunday. Now we're actually here in Monday, so this is where they're predicting that it that's what's happening right now and then here's Tuesday so I'm gonna stop it at the end of Friday so here's the actual data of what happened through Friday the release continued in this Kara Sea moved on out to this Christmas Revolution Island and a, a very dark release to the east side of that northern part of Novaya Zemlya and then continuing with this orangey yellow release over in the Laptev Sea. A little bit of re yellow release and orange release coming up out of the Chukchi Sea and then the Barents Sea we're seeing a large orangey and into reddish release all the way down to Iceland. So now it's going into the forecast period and you can see it continuing to spread out red and this release is just moving waves and it's coming up through the sea ice which I showed in detail yesterday. So it's not slowing down and the sun is just starting to come up up here in this region. It's about, um, where's Novi Zemlya? It's about here and I, um, Svalbard is still in the dark. A lot of Greenland is still in the dark and the coastline of the Arctic is starting to come into view up here in Alaska and Canada, parts of Canada, and right over here um, in the Kara Sea. So we'll be checking on that periodically too. And as we get closer 
into the melt season, we'll be looking at sea ice a lot. So um, let's go to global view so everybody can get an idea of what methane is doing in your neck of the woods. And so here's what methane was doing at the end of Friday. So I'm going to leave that as a backdrop. And then we're going to go over to comments. Okay, the first comment that came in under my video from yesterday on polar bears invading Novaya Zemlya and then showing Arctic sea ice and methane and earthquakes, Alfred Phillips says, thanks for information. You're very welcome, Alfred Phillips. Thanks for being here. And then Hothead Scott, under my nitrogen dioxide video, says atomic number seven. So in the periodic table, nitrogen is the number seven. And then he says it's the universal common denominator. So thank you for that information, Hothead Scott. Then, under the rest of the comments come in under my video from yesterday, and John Kelly says, Perhaps they can feed the 50-plus bears at a distance from the settlement, drawing them away from it. I know. And if people aren't familiar with that story, 50, I think 52 polar bears are stranded on, on Novaya Zemlya, and they're invading the settlement. It's a military town. And, um, and, um, Right now, they, they haven't been killed. Um, Russia, Russia has, um, has the polar bears on the red list for endangered species, so it's against the law to kill them, but they've tried to scare them off, and it's not working. They've been there since December. They're hungry, and they're going into people's homes, and and offices and stuff like that and they're actually attacking some people so now um, they're re they're sending a task force up to si up to Novaya Zemlya to decide what to do with the polar bears so we'll be watching this story for sure and I agree I think they need to be feeding them and maybe drawing them away from the settlement and um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what their thinking is right now, according to the articles that I read yesterday. And you go back, you can go back to that show and see it. They've just been um, maybe firing warning shots in the air and honking horns and doing sirens and the police dogs and stuff like that. And it's not it's not scaring off the bears anymore so you know I feel bad for the bears I feel bad for them I mean it was their territory and maybe the humans should leave and just give the bears the island you know that's my thought but we know that's not going to happen Shannon Lee says thank you you're welcome Shannon Lee thanks for being here Fahala56 says, Margo, you are a hard one to keep up with on climate. Thanks. You're welcome, Fahala, and thanks for the comment. And, well, yeah, I'm, I'm posting every day now. Now that I'm reporting on earthquakes, I decided to include a little bit of methane and other stuff, too. So, it's end up, it, 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 this is my daily therapy session. So... Everyone is joining me for my daily therapy. So thanks, Valhalla. And Sensible Hair says, BOE coming summer 2019. Thanks, Margo. And what Sensible Hair is talking about for people who are not familiar with BOE, it means Blue Ocean Event. And, or um, Ice-Free Arctic Blue Ocean Event. 
and this is what everybody's kind of biting their nails over when is it going to happen it could it happen this summer it could happen this summer it could happen this summer next summer um and it doesn't have to be completely ice free in order f to be considered an ice free arctic or for for us to have a blue ocean event it's a certain percentage of ocean that is without ice so that the ships can go through it that and a certain amount of volume of ice um it's a whole calculation and measuring type thing um so it could be we're going to be watching it thanks for being here sensible here ddsb says agreed summer 2019 will be an eye opener re heat i am a witness as are all of us fyi your voice is so soothing and comforting you sound like my favorite aunt oh thank you ddsb I listen to your report at night as I go down to sleep. I live at the edge of the earth where California meets the wild Pacific and it makes the world seem right as you full full lull away. Your daily efforts are very much appreciated here. Good night. Thank you DDDSB. You're very kind with your comment. And I agree this summer is going to be are changing in many ways so thank you for your comment and thank you for being here ultra high carb life says thank you margo you're welcome ultra high carb life thanks for being here future a to b says i linked your ice report to a newspaper in denmark extra blot it where we discuss in comment section the situation regarding the polar bears wow i'm getting recognition worldwide here thank you future a to b let me know what happens over there i'd be interested to um to find out and you know if you're following the development of it keep us posted here cuz i want to know what's happening to those polar bears and thank you for sharing sharing my report and thanks for being here. Fred Bloggs says, "Here's a thought that must be affecting the northern hemisphere. Seven thousand years ago, we were at obli obliquely tilt of 24.5. Now we are at 23 23 23.5." meaning the sun is lower in the sky in summer solstice now but it also means the north pole now has a higher sun on the horizon in winter now compared to 7000 years ago to summarize the sun is stronger now in winter and getting higher in the sky at the same time the sun is now lower in the summer sky with cooling summers in the region of the poles this must be having an effect on sea ice. I would think so, and thank you for that observation, Fred Bloggs. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I don't follow the tilts that much, but um, I have heard that the tilt of the Earth has changed, and the, of course, the magnetic pole is changing, and everything is moving around. So I'm certain it has t has an effect on um, on the sea ice. I'm and with it being stronger, you know, if it's stronger in the winter, well, they're not getting sun in the winter, um, but well, it's still winter and the sun's starting to come up, so it could be melting it faster. Starting to melt it faster is my thought too. So thanks for being here. And I think Fred is from Sweden. I think that's correct if I'm um so thanks for thanks for being here, Fred, and, and let me know. I think you said you were from Sweden, so let me know on that. A, a Terry are 
Arturica, Rikia, and Hexlian says we've been taking away the polar bear's habitat for quite a long time. If they only have been taking revenge in the most recent years, then these bears are ridiculously patient. Good observation. And I agree, um, humans have been encroaching on all of the animals' habitats for a very long time, and it's, it's just part of what happens. So thank you for your comment and your observation and for being here. Patricia Powell says, great report, Margo. Thanks, Patricia. The ice looks bad. Your pictures and info are so good. Thanks for the effort you put into this reporting. Well, I'm. you're welcome, and thank you for appreciating my work and for being here with us on this journey. And um, I'm glad it's helping you. I think it helps us to understand the world, especially when we see it in pictures and the real satellite images and things like that. And because we're so cut off from reality and we're so cut off from nature that this is one way we can keep a pulse, keep an, keep an eye on the pulse of Mother Earth. And it helps me to attune to the energy of Mother Earth when I do this too. So thanks for being here, Patricia, and thanks for your comment. Then Robert Forsyth leaves a few comments, and he says, Humble, kind hearts are nice. Yes, first off, these are highly likely methane ponds when over land. If it is out to sea, it is likely methane sea. I'm thinking it means cl clathrate. Break methane C breakdown. It also has to be free of ice for its release. Margo, is there any way you can look at ocean currents? I fear AMOC is shutting down. What are the temps in the Arctic now? Funny, I think an AMOC shutdown would be good and bad. It will conserve ice in the north by retaining heat in the south. This may be the explanation for those spots that refreeze for no known reason. It all is serious. Winter time in dark has to be anaerobic action on energetic manner, matter, wet or dry. Well, thanks for your comment, Robert. Um, I haven't really looked at the AMOC, but I did find an article from the Washington Post that people can look at that gives um, gives a pretty good explanation in layman's terms so that we can understand it. And it says the ocean circulation hasn't been this sluggish in 1,000 years, and that's bad. And the AMOC is, is it's, it's short for the Atlantic Mer Meridional Overturning Circulation. And they, they, uh, they shorten it to AMOC, A-M-O-C, and what it is is these ocean currents, and you can't really study this, the Atlantic Ocean currents, without studying the Pacific Ocean currents, too, because they all go in together, and so um, I haven't really looked into this before, so this will be our first, our first lesson in it a very short one just looking and what happens is the ocean currents in the Atlantic it comes up from the from the south there are two there's one that comes up and over and this is the one in the higher higher region of the Atlantic and it's warm and then it comes up to about the tip of Greenland and then it comes back down and as it's coming down it it dives deep and then it gets colder and it's moving and it, then it comes back around and then it goes around and becomes the Pacific current and everything comes back and so 
This is the observed um, temperature change since 1870. We can see on on this chart. This is in Celsius, degrees Celsius, that like this pink pinky color is like two and a half, and then the dark pink color is up to three, and then the darker darker pink brown color is probably three and a half degrees Celsius. So then when you've got like this tan color that's a one degree Celsius and it goes goes into the dark tan and pinky and so it's it's also showing the temperature of the ocean in this manner too and so this is what we've got strong warming so with with what's happening with this sluggish system um with it not with it not moving everything around the way it should the it looks like the warm water is is kind of getting hung up here as it's coming up the east coast of the United States and then out and then so it's kind of pooling it looks like in off the northern coast of the United States in Canada and hanging out there and then it comes around slowly and with it not moving as fast then it says it's cooler water right here but we're we're that's not what we're seeing um, if we look at climate reanalyzer and some of the other models I mean this is that's not what we're seeing so I don't know let's look at climate reanalyzer real quick and we're gonna go to sea surface temperature anomaly and so what we're seeing is this area well for right now I think it would depend on the time of year too so we can see that it's hotter up here where they're showing where they're showing it where it's here hotter here then they're showing a little bit of cooler here and we're seeing a little bit like that where was that um to the southeast tip of Greenland southeast tip of Greenland I don't see that do you I see it right here but right down here it's warmer so maybe maybe the AMOC is even worse than this article I don't know because this article was done almost a year ago April of 2018 so it could have slowed down I mean it's been 10 months so um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on this in order to talk about this intelligently if other people want to do some research and put it in the comments you know and if you know about this and can educate us on it and so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel that would be great because um, I am I am so busy with trying to keep up with methane and sea ice and and um, earthquakes and other news articles and stuff like that you know I mean I know the AMOC is important and I need to know about it but if someone else could help us out here and be part of our world classroom that would be great so thanks for bringing this to our attention Robert and so I'm going to pass that assignment along to someone else and then Robert says the process of decreasing ice 
to hunt will make mothers with cubs thin re regarding the polar bears and increase mortality of cubs of cubs greater they will need to dump food away from the settlement to resolve this i think you're right and the poor little baby bears they're they're not going to fare well and then he says another one Polar bears likely will only have a chance in Antarctica as it will be the last vestige of ice. By the point they are only in zoos, it will be far, far to be for anyone to care about them. Yeah, so it's it's a hard it's a tough call and then he recommends electric fences and mace bombs and best chances to fump to dump food far away yeah they're gonna have to lead them away from the settlement rather than sitting there just blowing their horn and having the dogs bark that's my thought Because they're there for a reason, you know. They're not there to sleep in the homes. I think they're looking for food. So thank you, Robert, for being here and for your observations and your comments and everybody else. And so now let's move on to our earthquake report. And I have USGS pulled up for all magnitudes worldwide for the last 24 hours and we're showing 194 on the map so they ha they have increased in number since yesterday because it's Monday and the earthquake makers are back at work which you'll see in a moment and then when we move over to the two and a half magnitude and higher worldwide for the last 24 hours we're showing 29 earthquakes on the map so let's see the oldest and which ones are about to fall off the map it looks like they start down here in the Caribbean so let's go down to the Caribbean right off the bat and in this two and a half magnitude and higher range we're seeing eight earthquakes and we're, we're, there was a 3.3 .3 up there I'll just click them off um, I'll just start down here 3.1 3.1 2.5, 3.3, 3.2, Some of these are kind of deep. Uh, 142 kilometers on this 3.3, 124 kilometers on that 3.2. Now here's a 3.3 and 2.6. Now if we go to all magnitudes, see how many we have nine so this 1.9 came in at Puerto Rico and that's the only one under two and a half magnitude so we can see that all these others were in the ocean so they didn't cause any damage but it is showing movement and so this swarm that was up here to the north of Dominican Republic is calmed down but now it looks like um, it looks like they're clustering over to the east of this other island, Puerto Rico. That's what that island is. All right, so we got that covered. Now while we're here, let's start down here. Here's a 4.9 near. 
Punta de Barriga, Panama. This one came in at 7.17 this morning, right on the red line. It was in the ocean, so it didn't cause any damage. But it's showing movement. Down here in Chile was a 4.3 near Roncagua, Chile. This one came in at 5.56 this morning, 94 kilometers deep. Then coming across the Pacific here in Tonga was a 5.0 near Hihifo, Tonga. This one came in at 3.27 this afternoon. And these times are all Pacific time. I have it set for local time. That's my local time. We can see that was right on the red line there in the ocean, so there was no damage on that, more than likely. Then here was one, a 4.2 near Isengel, Vanuatu, that came in last night at 6.35 p.m., 250 kilometers deep. So that one was pretty deep. So when you see them deep like that, it's um, going to cause movement of the plates around the planet. Let's come on up here to this one on this red line, a 4.9 near Izu Islands, Japan region. This one came in at 326 this afternoon in, in the ocean right on that red line. Then Next, we have one in Afghanistan, a 4.2 near Ashkashom, Afghanistan. This one happened at 6.54 this morning, 183 kilometers deep. And there's, there's the town, Ashkashom. So it was a ways from it. That probably didn't cause any damage. 4.2. It depends on if it's in a populated area or not. Here's one that happened in Iran. A 4.5 near Bandar Abbas, Iran. This one came in last night at 8.12 p.m. Right there on the land. Next to that red line. Then, we had one in Turkey, off the coast in the Mediterranean Sea, right here, was a 4.1 near Oludeniz, Turkey. This one happened at 8.38 this morning in the ocean, right next to that red line. Now, the USGS doesn't report a lot of earthquakes that do happen, especially international ones. They only report international ones of four and a half magnitude and higher. So if you want to see international ones at lower magnitudes and ones that are not reported on USGS, you can go to the e e at EMSC website. That's the European Seismic Reporting Agency. Um, I occasionally will go over there for something, but I pretty much stick to the USGS. I figure we can, s that, that keeps me busy. Okay, then we had a 4.9 on Kamchatka. This is this peninsula um, coming down part of Russia. This was near Ozernovsky, Russia. This one happened at 928 this morning, 136 kilometers deep. 4.9 is close to 5. That could have been a 5 and it could have been downgraded, but it looks like it wasn't in a populated area, so it probably didn't cause any damage. So that's our international earthquakes. So now 
while I'm in the Pacific and before I forget, let's zoom in to Hawaii and see what's going on. Well, we've got an uptick here. We've got 10 showing on the map here. This is all magnitudes. I'll call them off. <clears throat> Get that big enough for everyone to see. 1.8 2.3. Now this one was at a minus 1.5 kilometers depth, which means the earthquake happened up in in the in the mountain or the chamber, and this was part of the Mauna Loa region. Um, so part of the Mauna Loa volcano region. So. That was up. That was the magma moving up there and causing the earthquake up high in the mountain. Then a 1.8, 1.7, 2.0 at a minus 0.7 kilometers depth again in this Mauna Loa area. A 1.4 at a minus 1 3.5 kilometers depth. That was up maybe on the edge of the crater. 1.8 down here, 1.9 and 1.9. So we're talking about these, these that came in at the negative depth. This one was a minus 0.7. This one was a minus 3.5 kilometers depth. And this one was a minus 1.5 kilometers depth. What was this one? This one was 16 kilometers deep, so that was further down. So, there's that. Here's the Mauna Loa Observatory. That's where they capture the carbon carbon dioxide for the reports. Now, let's look at Alaska. Let's look at the two and a half magnitude and higher first for Alaska. And we're seeing six here on the map. Two and a half magnitude and higher. I'll call them off. 2.7 at Kobuk. 2.7 near Middleton Island, 2.6 near Mid Middleton Island. So those were at the same place. They're lighting up the same place. 2.5 near Big Lake and 2.5 near Kobuk. Now, let's go to all magnitudes and let's go back up here to Kobuk. I thought there was more up here. Maybe it was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yesterday or day before, we saw a whole bunch up here at Kobuk. We saw about eight or nine. So we got uh, 2.4 also here. So we got three in this area. Nothing up on the northern slope. And then the rest of them are from like the mid middle point of the state peppered down and we've got 58 on the map today including this one over here on the red line a 2.0 near Yucatat let's see how I always like to see how many are in the Anchorage area wow it's really calmed down see only 17 when I zoom in like this 17 on the map area. When I zoom out a little bit, there's 18. So it's really calmed down. Either either nothing's moving up there or maybe something's building. I don't know. Here's a 2.1 near Redoubt Volcano. 2.4 near Nikiski. So the ones under two and a half are significant as well. It's all showing movement. Now let's move on down into the United States. 
the lower 48. I'm going to start over here on the Mississippi River. Looks like it's right on the edge of the river. We have three here all at the same place. They're stacked up and this is part of the New Madrid fault zone, the hazardous area. In case people don't know about it, this um, there was a series of earthquakes that happened from the uh, from December of 1811 to about February of 1812. They were quite large in the sevens range and caused lots and lots of damage. And, th and the earthquakes came in in the middle of the night and um, they could be felt as far away as New York. And, and this whole area is considered the New Madrid hazardous zone. And because of the location and and um, that it's right there, you know, where the Mississippi River comes down through through the United States. They say that if if we had any large earthquakes here, it would be the most devastating of any we've ever had because of it would cut off water to so many places and transportation and. And it's highly populated. It would affect so many, so many cities that it would be, it would be really catastrophic. So that's why <clears throat> this is in <clears throat> in the red here. So we have three here, right there at Ridgely, Tennessee, a 1.6 at 1.36 this morning, a 1.0 at 4.35 this morning, and a 0.6 at 7.05 this morning. So I don't know what was going on there. It could just be part of the hazard zone. I don't know. But that's where those three stacked up together. And this is the Mississippi River coming down. Then, moving out west, Oklahoma, we had a 2.5 near Chickasha, 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 Oklahoma, last night at 6.28 p.m. And then, coming over to Utah and Arizona, We've got two down here in Arizona. Um, here's a 1.0 and a 1.6 down here in northern Arizona. Then coming up here into Utah at Enterprise or Tokerville. Tokerville. So Utah. This one is a 1.1 and this one is a 0.8 at Tokerville. Here's another one in the Escalante Desert, a 0.5 near Milford, Utah. Then we have a cluster up here of 5 near Farron, Utah, a 1.3, 1.9, 1.9, 1.6, and 1.8. So that's a cluster of 5 here at Farron, Utah, for whatever reason. I'm just showing movement. Then moving on up. 
into the Yellowstone area we have some activity. First we have this little tiny one a point eight near Old Faithful Geyser, Wyoming at 735 this morning. Then Here's another uh, point nine near Whitehall, Montana. Came in last night at eight eleven. Then we have a one point three near Lincoln, Montana that came in at eight fifty eight this morning. And I think this is the last one. A 1.5 near Polson, Montana that came in last night at 6 o'clock. That's it for Montana. Now moving into the Northwest. Look at Seattle. They're getting a cluster over here. We've got five on the map. Oh, here's one at Amboy. We know what that is. That's Mount St. Helens. That's a point eight. Which is um not huge. Thirty eight kilometers north northeast. I'm not even seeing that on the map. Here's Mount St. Helens. So I clicked on it, but I'm not seeing it. Oh. Anyway, here it is. That one was on the edge of the crater. We can see this is Mount St. Helens. And they usually have some earthquakes every day. So a point eight is probably not anything to really get too worried about. And it was two kilometers deep, so it was down in the earth. Okay, so let's look at the Seattle area. We've got four here. Here's a 1.1. You can see them light up. 1.3, uh, 1.6, and 1.2. So that's more of them right up there south of Seattle. There's an uptick. So nothing in Oregon. So let's get Northern California while we're here. Here we had a 2.0 near Dunsmore, California. Came in at 10.03 this morning. Let's look at Ukiah. Here was a 1.6 near Redwood Valley. It came in at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Now the geysers have 9 here today. And they're in the 1's range. Except for this 2.9. That's getting up there. A 2.9? It could be a 3. So that's getting up there. That's enough. to You'd feel that more than likely you'd feel that. That one came in last night at 9.43 p.m. And the rest are under that ones and under except for that 2.9. So now let's move over to Nevada and see what the earthquake makers are doing over here. Here's one up uh, point 0.8 near Carlin. That's in northern Nevada. Let's, oh, look, here's one right in the middle of Lake Tahoe. Here's a little tiny one on the California side. 
12.5. This one happened at 12.14 this afternoon. Then, here's a cluster down here at Hawthorne. Look at that. Here's a, the biggest one is a 2.3. So, we're seeing six on the map. That's including this, that 1.3 up there near Hawthorne, and that 0.5. So, four clustering right here. There's a 0.9, and this one was a 0.7. And this was a point, a 1.1. Now these three are all new. These red, red ones, they're all new. They're coming in right now. Like uh, this 2.3 happened at 4:47, and it's 5:07 now. And then the 0.9 came in at 4:52. At four four fifty two p.m. and fourteen seconds, and then the one point seven came in at four fifty two and fifty four seconds. So forty seconds later. So something's happening down there. The Earth is shaking. Here's a one point four, and so on. Here's a new one. Uh, 1.6 near Goldfield. And they do have mining operations. Goldfield is named for it's a, all the gold mines down there. That's why it's called Goldfield. I used to work for a geologist who did, um, he, he did gold mining. That was his specialty. And I did a lot of of paperwork for him for um, filing filing his claims and things like that, and plots, doing plots, and reading reading uh, topographical maps for where the mines were and stuff like that. So it was interesting. And here's a 1.7 and 1.6 near Warm Springs. So, um, we got this one by Ely, did we? Oh, no, we didn't get that. We had a 2.3 explosion, 2.3 magnitude, uh, that was caused by an explosion near Ely, just outside of town, and at zero kilometers depth, so they were blasting something. So there's an earthquake maker. When you see an explosion, that's what I call earthquake makers. So I think we covered Nevada pretty good. Now let's come back over to California. Come down this San Andreas Fault. Here's a 1.1 near Milpitas and 1.1 near Alum Rock. Then look at We've got, we've got more activity right down here than we've seen. Here's a 1.6 near San Ardo. Here's the San Andreas Fault Line. Here's a 1.5 near Parkfield. Here's a 1.9 near Kettleman City. We've got two over here. A 1.8 near Kalinga. And then this larger one, 2.9. This one came in at 5.07 this morning, 14 kilometers deep near Kalinga. That could be 3. That could be a 3.0 that was downsized. And that's, that's sizable. That's, you could feel that. Here's a 1.3 near Kernville. Here's a 1.1 magnitude quarry blast near Tehachapi. This one came in at 105 this afternoon. 
And coming down into the Los Angeles area, we had a 2.6 near Fontana. Here's, um, here's a cluster of four right here in Lucerne Valley. I'll call them off. 2.6, 2, well, 1.3, 1.6, and 1.6. All in the same place, same area. I'm getting interested in clusters now. Down across the border, uh, this one is new. It's a 2.9 near Guadalupe, Victoria at Baja, California, Mexico. That one came in at 5.08 p.m., 20 kilometers deep. Then up here to the west of Mexicali, they're calling it near Progreso, uh, 1.9 came in at 1.10 this afternoon. Now, let's see, just in Southern California, we've got 40 on the map. So that's more than we had yesterday. We've got one down here in the Salton Sea, 1.3. And then we had our cluster here at Kawea, 25 on the map here including the ones up here by Idlewild. And these were under ones, all under ones, except for this 1.1 and 1.0. Now let's come up this east side. Um, Ludlow had one more earthquake. It was a 1.1. Remember we saw that swarm of like 66 in a 48 hour period there? And then we saw a few there yesterday and then this is the last one in the last 24 hours. So maybe that's calming down. Here's another explosion right on the road. A 2.4 magnitude quarry blast. That's a pretty big blast. That's it. That was near Prim, Nevada, but it was in California. This one came in at 318 this afternoon. It was at minus 1.1 kilometers depth, so it was up on the mountain side. Mountain Pass. See, here's Mountain Pass. And they were blasting right up there. near Clark Mountain Road. This is White Eagle Road here. Now, coming on up. We saw that one at Kernville. Here's a little one. Point seven near Beatty, Nevada, but it was on the California side. Now, this is the Mammoth Lakes area. We only have two here today, a point eight and a 1.0. That's pretty quiet. They got a lot of snow down there. They got like 11 feet and then we had another snowstorm come in last night I mean night before last so I mean we're gonna be set for rain for this summer I mean for water because this, all this snow when it melts it it provides water for all the areas here's a 1.4 near Bridgeport and a 0.9 near Bridgeport that's and and we just hope that it doesn't melt too fast because if it rains and we got all that snow and we're expecting rain on Wednesday
but snow up in the mountains so it's it's like a delicate balance here and once you get all that snow it's like you don't want it to melt too fast because then it floods everything and causes mudslides and avalanches and rock slides and all kinds of stuff okay we have this cluster here near Markleyville and the largest one was a 3.0 that came in last night at 8.50 p.m. and it was at a minus 1.1 kilometers depth so that means that the epicenter was up in the mountain right there so I'll call these off there are five here so we had that one then a 1.2 0 0.9 0 0.8 and 1.2 so all of those have come in um, between 8.50 last night and 11.30 this morning and this 1.2 came in 8 minutes after this 3.0 So those two came in within eight minutes. So there's that. Here's Markleyville. So I think that's it. So let's back out and see what's come in what's this one 2.9 I showed that Let's see if anything significant has come in since I started recording the show or this part of the show we saw this 5.0 at Tonga we saw this 4.9 near Izu Islands, Japan. And I think that's it. That's a wrap. So I do believe that we are in the end times. And that time is very short. No one knows the day or the hour. And I recommend everyone get your spiritual houses in order. And love everyone forgive people who you're holding grudges against and forgive yourself and ask God to forgive you too and Jesus to forgive you and it just makes life a lot easier that to not carry around a whole bunch of anger and feeling feeling like you've been wronged and everything I mean we've all had those things everybody's been a victim here and you know it's time for us to become mature and just work on our spiritual houses and treat each other with dignity and respect and love in these last few days and weeks and hours that we have so until next time God bless everyone. I love you all. Go in peace and good night.